All right, we are live for the fifth time. Chad's not going to use a voice mod this time, but uh, welcome back no. to the Open Your Reality. We are one uh, patch episode with uh, Alice Cooper. Uh, my name is Chad. That's Ken. Uh, we're playing Trade in Places, and uh, I, we're not going to do that. Forget it. There's a movie on Netflix. That, that, was, a, that was a great movie, man. Can you believe that that movie came out 40 years ago? 40 years ago. That's crazy. Yeah, there's another one on Netflix. I think that they they're doing now too. There's a whole family flop. Just think about this, right? When we were about ten years old, when I was ten years old, it was 1983. That's when Trading Places came out. Forty years before that, we were in freaking World War II. Hmm. The 80s don't seem, you know, like I don't know, Not man. That long ago. Yeah, we're going to be talking about time. Go ahead, Ken. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Nope. So, um, you know, we we had some discussions uh, on the We Are One channel. If you guys haven't seen that, we, we posted it yesterday. Uh, check it out. Not a lot of views right now. I haven't posted in a long time, so I apologize on my channel. Uh, we're going to try to get those back up. I want to start posting um, just my random thoughts and uh, see if you guys uh, vibe with any of them. Anyway, uh, in the conversation we had yesterday that I just posted with Chad and with Rob, um, we talked about mentalism and predicting predicting behaviors and how it doesn't make sense to me. And Chad and Rob, I would, I, say, I would say it's more than predicting behaviors. Prediction means like, uh, you know, there's a certain percentage of the time you get it right. And a certain, this guy's doing it like a hundred percent. Yeah. And, and he's doing it in real time. So he, he's not predicting events that are going to happen through some kind of quantum computer or looking glass technology. He's actually, he's basically predicting thoughts that haven't happened yet. So we were talking about the Akashic records and is the field out there? If we're living in a simulation, is it possible this has already happened and this guy's doing this? So anyway, I'll play this real quick. You guys wait, can watch wait, it. Just, His name is just, set, just, set, just set the clip up for people so they understand. What's yep. this guy's name? Well, this guy's a mentalist. Uh, he was on uh, America's Got Talent. I believe he got second place uh, a few years ago. And he travels around the country now for ESPN. And What's for his name? Sports teams and Oz Perlman. Oz, Oz Perlman. Perlman. Okay. Yep, and this clip you're about to show us, who who are the people he's talking to in the clip? So he's got the Cincinnati Bengals uh, football team in a room, and he's predicting numerous things. He's asking the quarterback to stand up. His name is Joe Burrow. The quarterback stands up. He says, hey, I'm going to predict who you'll throw the ball to. So he says, go. So he throws it to a guy. He says, got it. So he says, okay, maybe that was lucky. Let's do it again. Writes another name down. Boom, they got those the same guy again. So this is the third time that he's actually talking to the room. Uh, and I'm going to play the, the the clip. I hope it doesn't get, get knocked because I don't want to play too many seconds of it. Uh, you guys can check it out. It's all over YouTube uh, as other uh, sports teams are talking to Oz Perlman as well. So let me go ahead and play this for you guys. Go ahead. Show me your last play. Go. Damn it. Fakes to Jamar, throws to Tanner. Okay, yeah, so that, that uh, looked a little that sheet, looked a little laggy to me. Hopefully, people at home could could hear that. I think they'll get the gist of it, regardless. Um, is that he he actually in the video you can see that he writes it down before the, the guy does it. So, I mean, unless the guy can freeze and stop time or rewind time, um, I don't see how that's a predictive behavior. That's a, that's some kind of magic crap. And it's either some kind of MK Ultra stuff where he's able to tap into him, in my opinion, and, and send what he wants him to do. Um, and, uh, and and then he does it. So he's got multiple, multiple, multiple videos of him doing these kind of things where he's he's predicting behavior so specific and flawlessly 100% of the time in real time. So we had a conversation Wait, about I'm, yesterday. I want to ask you some questions about this. Because yes. I haven't seen this guy. Entirely. How long has this guy been doing this mentalism? Uh, he doesn't look that old. Maybe he looks 40 years old. I'm guessing he's been doing it for like 10 years. I don't know. I, I, it doesn't look like it's a lifelong thing for him. When he was on America's Got Talent, did he do the same act on that show? He did different acts. So I don't know if you guys have seen these kind of things. But what he'll do is like he'll – He'll do some kind of like crazy stuff where he'll say, uh, write, your, write your name down on this piece of paper. Uh, you know, everybody write their name down. And then he'll say, put it in this box. He'll wrap the box up. He'll do some crazy stuff. 
he'll like shred the box, light it on fire. And he'll be like, oh, this has gone. Check your pocket. And then they'll open their pocket. There'll be like some card in there in a box encased in like some wrapping. And then they'll undo the box or a dollar bill. And it'll be the exact same thing they wrote down on something else. So, you know, there's, there's all kinds of examples of this kind of stuff. He, he did that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I've seen David Blaine also do this type of stuff too. And he so, did the, I mean, well, I was going to say one of the tricks that David Blaine did was he would ask somebody maybe like the name of someone, a, a loved one that they lost, yep. the mo you know, that they love the most and they'll say their name. And uh, David Blaine would pick up his shirt and it would be tattooed on his, on his yep. stomach. Something right. like stuff that. that you can't stuff that you can't predict. I mean, in my opinion, or, you can't predict certain things. Or he, he would go up to somebody on a subway. This was the street magic he was doing. And he would say, think of a deck of cards. Think of one card, Jack of Spades. And the guy would be like, no, how did you know? So right. how, how, did, how are they pulling this off? That, that's a good, that's the question. And that's kind of what, where I was going yesterday is that how do they, is, is there a field of knowledge that can be, that, that I could tap into, that I can make that bounce off that field, which I said was maybe the Van Allen radiation belt above our simulation, simulated earth that could beam it down into this guy's brain that makes me throw the ball and do the things that he's, he's predicting. That's the only way that makes sense to me. Now, I know there are skeptics in the audience who are probably saying, come on, Ken, this has got to be a trick. There has to be okay. something to it because yep. if this guy could actually predict what people will do. Why doesn't he go to Vegas and play the slots? Why doesn't he, you know, why isn't he buying stocks or trading stocks yep. on Great the exchange? Question. Because why? Well, yeah, it only I, works. I, I don't know. I mean, those are those are all great questions. It only works like a party trick when he's around people, but but can he do it to make money? Can he do it for the good of humanity? Probably I guess not. That brings I, up, think a, I think that brings up a, a great question. Is, is this a magic trick? Are, are, is mentalism a magic trick? Uh, and if so, how are they doing it? I mean, assuming that they're not playing playing the, the world like a stage, like politics works, or you know, or the, the thing that happened a few years ago, they're not playing it like a stage, showing Italy and then saying, oh, this is New York. You know, they're not playing that stage. So it, do you believe in magic? Do you believe in, in things that we cannot comprehend and explain? Because I, I for sure do. I think I do because I've seen some of these magic tricks. There's a there's a couple of, uh, I don't know, it's not even a couple. There's probably a lot of younger magicians that I saw years, maybe five, six, seven years ago on YouTube where they were doing things like they would, they would actually have a glass bottle and let's say they have a, like a penny and they would put it into the glass bottle or a pencil or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how does that happen? How can the, how can you possibly do that? And I haven't seen these clips recently, but it's just unexplainable. And they would go around to people in, you know, coffee shops and, and they would just demonstrate this magic right in front of them. And people are always right amazed at that. How about the one where David Blaine went up to a homeless person and the homeless person had a, a cup of coffee and he takes the cup of coffee and he, he starts doing this to it and all of a sudden it's it's filled with quarters and dimes and nickels and he gives it to the homeless guy as money like i, I mean, think it, there's it a, could be a charade it could be a charade i mean it could be it could be film filmography you know as far as uh film magic or whatever they whatever you would you would call that it could be completely oh. staged well david copperfield like when he took away the statue of liberty that was yes that was an illusion of course right it's on tv but right yeah it's on tv but some of the things that David Blaine does is, is, you know, street magic that any skilled magician can do. But there are some things that he does that are real, but they're less magic. Um, like he'll bury himself for three days or, or a week with no food, no yeah. water. Or he'll stand on top of a tower for three days straight without sleeping. Or he'll hold his breath for, you know, 15, 15 16 minutes. minutes. Yep. Yes. Or he'll be buried in a block of ice, you know, or he'll take a needle and he'll stick it right through his arm or put a sword down his throat. These are all things that he's trained himself to do. But when it comes to the magic aspect, I mean, this blows me away, this clip that you showed, Abaz. Are there, are there any other clips of him? 
There's tons of them. Like and, and he he does the same. So he here's another thing that he does in the same the same the same um 20 20 minute clip. So he asks, he says, Okay, Joe Burrow, uh, I got you, right? Everybody saw that I got you. Come on down here. And he says, Okay, Joe, um, this is Tyler Boy, Tyler, stand up or whatever, or whoever, whoever. He says, Somebody stand up. So the guy stands up and it's Tyler Boyd or whatever. And he says, Tyler, I want you to think about something. And I'm gonna I'm gonna program the Joe's brain. So I want you to think about the first girl you ever kissed. Does Joe know who that is? He's like, no. He's like, okay, think about what grade that might have been. And then think about her name. And he goes, okay, I'm going to have Joe take my place. And so now Joe goes, uh, third grade, Sarah. And he's like, holy shit. How, like, and he, everybody's like, is that right? He's like, that's freaking crazy, dude. So so not only is he is he sort of reading this guy's mind, but now he's in, in I mean, in my opinion, the only way it makes sense is, if it's not staged, he's putting the thoughts into this guy's mind that he read from this guy's mind. Like it's some kind of, I would say it's demonic magic or black magic or whatever, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's that. I think it's the same thing about these MK ultra stuff and the secret space program stuff is that when, when you shoot information and, and light is information and energy uh, and information come through light, um, through the sun, through, through satellites, through all kinds of stuff. Many people think it's th coming through the moon or th through Saturn's rings and that our virtual reality uh, world that we live in is not real. It's actually getting projected like the holographic universe. Uh, these things are actually coming through information packets in light. So if there's a way for him to, to, to manipulate that, if that's possible, that's what's going on in my opinion. Yeah. And even Uranus, it ain't your grandfather's Uranus anymore. Not anymore. It's a brand new one with more rings. <laughs> so... It's reality is changing all the time. Yep. And, and these things are, are becoming actually mainstream science, which is the crazy thing. So uh, this is my stream. Cool. I can do this. So this guy, um, his name is Erwin Ir Irvin Laszlo. Uh, he's a 90 something year old Hungarian. He actually wrote uh, a book with your, but your buddy, uh, Anthony peak. Um, and it was, I believe it was in reference to the Akashic records. So if they're somewhere, they're, they're actually physically somewhere. And this gentleman won the Nobel Peace Prize, I believe, in 2004 for the information proving that there is an Akashic record field and it does exist. So, uh, you know, that sent my mind going, well, where, where is this field? Uh, if this is a matrix, where, where is it? Wait, did he scientifically prove the Akashic record? Proved. I don't know. There was an Akashic field. Yep. Yes. There's, there's definitely a field out there. I mean, um, <clears throat> there was a book written by Lynn McTaggart called The Field that I read. And David Wilcock talks about the source field. So I do believe that there's a morphogenic field where what's the information... Name, what's the name of your guy that, that wrote the, the, the field? Uh, it's Lynn McTaggart. L, it's a woman, L-Y-N-N-E okay. McTaggart. I tried to get her on the show once. I couldn't get her. Okay, got it. Give me a second. I'm I'm gonna look up when she discussed this field. Uh, I want to know who came first, the chicken or the egg. I want to know if she actually talked about the field um, before this was proven or after. Because I asked. Um, okay, so she was born 1951. I don't know when she. Okay, the field. I I asked my wife, who's into the metaphysical stuff too. She's a Reiki master. Okay, here. Interesting. So this is my point. 2008. She wrote the book, The Field. So my, my point, I didn't know whether this guy took the information and proved it. You can't prove it in a year, two years. The Nobel Prize wasn't given away for somebody's research that was done in like 10 minutes. Like it's probably lifelong research or, or, or whatever. But so anyway, 2004, the Akashic, the Akashic field is, um, is proven scientifically. Uh, 2008, she writes The Field. So she took his work, wrote a book about his findings, I'm sure is what it's about, which is super interesting that, you know, before the metaphysical uh, scientism or whatever you want to call it is, it has used that word. Um, it wasn't before 2004, I don't believe. I, I don't know if he coined the term, the Akashic field or the Akashic records, but that's where it comes from. Do you know of any other people that are doing the same mentalism as this guy, Oz Perlman? Have you seen clips of them? 
I, I don't know of it. I, I haven't seen it with sports people, like in live context, like in a like in an auditorium or something. I don't know about that, but I'm sure that there are other people who are who are who have done this and are doing this. Um, my question is, you know, do people do, when you guys watch this stuff, or I'll ask you because you're here, you're not in our auditorium, but when you watch these things and you watch this, I mean, what, what do you, what what are your thoughts? Do you think that he's predicting what they're what they're doing, or are you like? Is this some kind of a mainstream like uh, introduction to shit that we can't even comprehend? Well, I think there's one of at least three possibilities. One is what okay. you said before. He could be putting these thoughts into their head, into their mind before they actually do it. So number two, this is a, this is a trick that I think David Blaine did where – the person, like, let's say I ask, I ask you something and you, as you tell it to me, he's writing it, but you don't see him actually writing it. Sometimes they use like a thumb. Okay. And I've seen this before. Okay. So it, he'll, he'll fake, let, watch this, right? Let's say I have a, he'll fake, say right. Have, he'll fake, right. Let's no, let's say I have a paper right here. Right. Okay. okay. I have a pen. Let me, let me demonstrate, make it real. So just as real okay. as your hair. This is going to make it real. Okay. Okay. So, Ken. Okay, I got my pen. Um, I'm thinking of a Ken, word. Ken, I'm going to write down the first girl that you ever kissed. Okay? Okay. What's her name? You're never going to get it. Her name is unknown. I don't even remember. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, right there. Holy you know how I did it? did it? I did it because I faked it. When you said you fake wrote, and then you wrote it with your thumb. fake wrote, and then when you said it, I wrote it real quick without you noticing, and then boom. So I mean, saying that's okay, so that, that's a possibility. Yeah, that's, that's where it could be a mechanical trick, but we'd have to go back to the video clip and see if he did that. What's the third possibility? Well, it could also be camera work. So okay, third, well, we can put it to that. That's fine. The third possibility is that he's actually predicting the future, so he's not influencing their mind. He's not writing it. He's just simply predicting the future. The fourth one could be that it's he's guessing. But the but then again, is, how the fourth one is he stopped time. He could stop. I mean, I used to think this was this was a legitimate superpower that I want. I was like, I want to stop time. Might go take some money from a bank or whatever. Just stop time. So but he could be fake you know writing. Who, he could be stopping the time. And before he reveals it, he switches it out. Okay, so that's a possibility too. Just mark me down for one of those. Well, you know who could stop time. If you've seen Matrix Four, Chris Sinatra? No, no. not Chris oh, yes. Sinatra. Yeah. He's not a time cop. Um, the uh, the guy, the, the Doogie Howser guy from Matrix Four, the whatever you want to call yeah, Patrick, him, the psychiatrist, Patrick Harris. the creator, whatever. Yeah. He could stop time. Well, to change the trajectory of the bullet. The creator, uh, the creator could stop time. The, the, I guess where that goes is. Uh, the creator of what? Is it the creator of this realm? Is it Yaldaba or is it the creator God? Uh, are now, there two different ones? The creator of the Bible? I, I've got I've got another scenario for you that's a possibility. What if, what if the creator or one of the creators or a higher level being was to come down and play a human character like Oz Perlman yep, and, and do these magic tricks like a Jesus, you know? Yeah, just like a Jesus. So he walked could on water. Be. So could he be. Made, I, I I just I don't think that if that would. I mean that. Listen, you you heard me enough to 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 say that anything's possible. I can't discount anything. Uh, for sure, I think that there are avatars. There are what I call empty vessels that are walking around here that somebody subconsciously from another dimension could come into and channel for sure. Wait, I got another possibility. Oh boy, the other possibility is. What I've talked about on the channel, and you know very well, that some of these so-called celebrities make a deal with the devil. And that's yeah. how they get their magic powers. They make that deal where they sell their soul and they get those powers to give them fame, fortune, popularity. And so they do all this, okay. right? They become popular. They become famous. They get money. But afterwards, their soul goes to the devil. Well, listen, we've I'm come up saying. with a lot of we've come up with a lot of a lot of potentials. Not one potential is this guy can read body language, which is what he says. I'm good with body language. I can read body language and predict. 
bro, that's not what's going on here. And if you think that that's what's going on here, then you are really falling for the, the trick of Mandela effects are just false memories from the, from the collective. See, reading body language is after the fact. That's yep. after the fact. I agree. You can't read body language to know, you know, what somebody's going to say or how, who's going to, someone's going to pass the ball to. So I, I, I discount that. But there is something to be said for body language, of course. Micro yep. facial expressions can tell a lot, but not predict the future. Yep. I agree. I agree. So I have another thing that we're going to pop up here. Let's see what happens. Let's pop it up. Here we go. All right, there's there's the I love Lucy that never happened. I guess I'm explaining this. So we got residue here from from this. Pretty good. Hope it didn't glitch. It completely. I, I have taken the sound off. What? Well, no, I've taken the sound off. So Lucy never says I have some explaining to do, or Lucy, you have some explaining to do. Um, these are some just some footage I took. I didn't want to take the guy's voice. I didn't think that was right. Um, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> So he never says that. So these people are saying that and everybody's laughing like it's really funny. Um, not sure how that's how, how that's false memory. Lucy, you got so explaining, Lucy. All right, so here's another one. I referenced this a few times when we talked, Chad, about um, this animator. I'm gonna let it play and just talk over it. This animator of the Jungle Book. Many of you have, many of you have seen this about the coconut bikini and there's none there this is the actual footage uh, it's going to get copyright probably but we'll have to grab it out so anyway the animator who this guy his name is come on show it up there it's coming there you go floyd norman who is a walt disney animator says uh numerous times that um he wrote in the uh the baloo's coconut bikini floyd norman has also gone on record saying that that was a hilarious uh, drag joke that they wrote that in there. So these are these are not so these are not mis mis memories. It's not a misremembering when when the people actually say the same thing. They say the same exact thing that we all remember. So you know residue exactly. proof. This isn't and and here and here's the really interesting part, right? This is, and I want to make this crystal. I don't want to really curse in here. I'm going to do it. Crystal fucking wanna, clear. This I just want to say one. I just want to say one thing too. It's not just the memory of the word. It's how it is said. Lucy, you got some explaining to do, right? So that just the tonality. Everybody says it the same way. The same Come on, way. false the same memory, way, right? Right. BS. And that's and that's what I want. That's what I want to address. I, I think people who talk about Mandela effects are just thinking it's like some kind of it's a misremembrance of of a Jiffy peanut butter or a cornucopia or some nonsense. When actually it's not just that. It's not just that, right? It it is physical things that change, right? It's it's um it's it's the, the Great not Wall only of the India. Movie, it's the body. The Great Wall of India, which is now India, not China. It's it's what I just showed. The Disney movie actually changing from the coconut bikini to a beak bikini or a coconut beak, not a bikini. I mean, you can't you can't change that stuff when it's in your possession. And people say, well, it's in my possession for 50 years, 40 years. Um, how did it change? And that's the point. Mandela effect is not false memory and is not recollecting things that we have seen. It's actually things that are in our possession, are in our reality that have physically changed. Yeah, I've talked about it on the channel a few times, but I used to take turmeric, no more because I'm just doing carnivore, but uh, I found somebody bottle. that did it on the internet. I found, so I'm going to show that to you. I don't have it. I should have pulled that. I found somebody who is a, who is a, a, a scientist, a, a doctor talking about turmeric, a video. He's like, turmeric, I take turmeric, T-U-M-E-R-I-C. This is before the Mandela effect changed. Sorry, man, go ahead. I, I, had, to, I had to put that in there because I know you have time. I made that. a video about turmeric back in 2016. But this okay? is a doctor. So this, this is a doctor okay, saying well, take turmeric. He's saying take okay, turmeric well, and it didn't change. So go ahead, sorry, go ahead. I said the same thing and I even wrote it and I should put it in here, but I wrote it on the screen, turmeric the right way without the two R's. 
And when I went back and looked at it, it was the same. I said it the right way. It was spelled the right way, but the bottle. Because you wrote it. But the yeah. right, but the bottle, the bottle changed. The bottle changed. Yeah. 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 And same thing happened with uh, Tom Campbell. Uh, his bottle changed, and I mean, Tom doesn't really understand how the bottle changed, and I'm, I don't think he understands anything's possible. So that's kind of odd that it's in a simulation, but nothing, not everything's possible. So. If anybody should believe in the Mandela effect, it should be Tom Campbell because it should, he should be Tom. That in a simulation, you know, even though we're in a tight rule set, well, um, Anthony Peake says the same thing. Anthony Peake says, I, "I agree with Tom Campbell, except for the fact that we we just disagree upon a certain aspect of reincarnation." Anthony Peake believes that reincarnation happens in the same body, the same avatar, but you live it over and over till you get it right. Um, and Tom Campbell believes that you reincarnate as somebody else, but you know. Prob probabilistically, uh, and that your history, you've lived those lives in a different uh, atmosphere, simulation in a different body. Um, I, I don't know which one uh, makes more sense, but I think it's a combination of some of that stuff. But I want to coin a, coin a phrase right now that it's if somebody knows what this is, um, much like quantum immortality, where I thought I couldn't die, uh, and I just kept popping out my daemon or my spirit kept guiding me to not die, um, as Anthony Peake says, I didn't even know what quantum immortality was. I had no idea what it was till somebody in one of Rob's uh, chats said, that's quantum immortality. And I said, what are you talking about? And I looked it up and I was like, holy shit. Like, this is the, my thoughts, my experiences. I had not had anything to it. So my, my Ken's paradox, I have my own paradox. I'm not saying that I'm the first one to say this, but Ken's paradox is very simple. If we have lived multiple lives and we have reincarnated, why is this the only time and now that we can focus on? Why have we not focused on that one? Why is it this one? It's a paradox. It's I reincarnated. I believe in reincarnation, but I don't know why I didn't focus on that before now. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, how do you know you didn't focus on reincarnation in your past life? Because I can't remember it. Like I'm remembering now. I, I'm living and remembering and, and focusing on and perceiving just the now. It's called Ken's Paradox. Make that shit famous. Go. Well, I, I you have to understand there's a memory wipe. There's a memory but wipe. You but, you're not, but you're not memory wiped from yesterday. This this life? No, no. This, this life is not is this all life. you can remember. But your, your, your previous lives are memory wiped. Right, but why so, are you only? Why are you now recognizing that you're Chad? Because I've been Chad since I've been born. Right, but in your other lives, you haven't remembered that you were anybody else. You 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 didn't focus on the here and now, is what I'm saying. You're not perceived to have lived any other time, but now, now is all there is, right? So if if it's, prior existed, it's a paradox. Mm -hmm. You can't remember anything besides this moment in this in this life and being who you are. And that's my paradox is that I believe in reincarnation because I've seen the proofs. Well, that's because Tom says that once you die, your free will awareness unit basically dies with you. Well, it doesn't, it dies with the avatar. It's taken, it's gone. It, it's removed. And your soul, your individuated unit of consciousness, you, the partition's taken down basically and you, you merge back with it. And then when you come back into a new life, you have a new free will awareness unit, which I call the persona. So your personality, your mind, but I don't understand any of that as far as that the way that, that that the way that that would construct my consciousness and my perception of the now is what I'm saying. So for that part of it, I, I agree with Anthony Peake that that my essence, my daemon, my spirit, um, my my ultimate player beyond the avatar that is that is Ken, um, that guy is gonna live forever. That but that's not Ken though. It won't, it may not you know? be Ken. It, it, may, it may not be going forward after this. I know I'm pretty clear on this. And I side with Tom Campbell that we have a soul. Ooh. We have a soul. And every time we reincarnate, right, we come in with a different persona. It's it's our quality of consciousness, but the personas can differ depending on the body. It, can, it depends on um, where we were born, our culture, things like that. The thing the thing that gets me is so in, in NDEs and in and and um uh, out-of-body experiences, you're always you. 
you're always you. you there's no there's no time where anyone's ever said that I, that I, I mean you may differentiate your body from what where you're perceiving your body but you're still you you're still your essence so when i say what is this what, what do i call this it's my hand well what do i call this my ear my nose it's my nose not me that's that's the old that's the adage and many people have heard that before so what i'm saying is you're it's it's always you inside of this avatar in an out of body experience and in an nde you perceive that you are looking down upon what you thought was you, right? So the point is, you can perceive that you're separate. But in my 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 experience and my my thoughts are with Anthony is that even though I know this is not me, this is this is not me. This is not my soul, not my spirit, not my not my immortality. Even though I know that, I can't remember ever not being this. And you could say it's a memory wipe, but it's not because when you go out of your body into a consciousness and look down upon your body, you are still you. You're not the body. You, you're you. And that's my point is that if if I was if I was in a reincarnation cycle, like Tom says, I would realize that I, I had my memory here. The memory wipe is in the body. You can't memory wipe my soul. I don't believe. OK, but when you are out of body, you're still a free a free will awareness unit. Correct. And that's why you don't remember the other lives because your free will awareness unit was memory wiped when you came into this world. So yes, you can look down and see your body and you're, you're, you, right. You're, you're still, you look, I've talked to, I don't know if you saw my interview with, with Bill, Bill Letson. I saw the first one. You, you did two, right? Or you did I, well, part one and well, part two? Not part one and two, but I, I put out just, uh, a video about his NDE, and then I put out the full interview. Yeah, yep. But while he was on the other side in his NDE, he still knew he was Bill Letson. He knew he had a wife and kids. He knew he was a, a firefighter, but he didn't want to go back. You know, so he still had that identity. He didn't but learn he had a separate about identity because he could see his body down there. I I don't I wouldn't he say that's a separate he identity because. The, the, the body is, 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 a, is a physical construct, which is really not physical at all. Right. The mind is consciousness. Consciousness is, is not, it's, it's not a thing. You know what I mean? It's not physical. It's not part of physical matter reality. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. We say this because I'm making it seem like the mind is in the ether and reality is it's physical, not. but it's kind of the opposite. Reality is an illusion and the mind is the only thing that's real. Right. So, yeah. I, that, and that I agree with you on. I just, I, I don't think that, I don't think that, 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 this, that this is me. I, I am the, the awareness unit that, that is perceiving um, and, and locked into this matrix suit or whatever this is called. Yeah. Um, but there are proofs. I mean, the, the, the proof for me that I am immortal, that I cannot die myself, this body can die, that I cannot die are, are those people who, those people who have out of body experiences or near experiences and they actually perceive things when they're not in their body. So they're perceiving things not in their body. They can hear the 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 um uh, the loved ones crying at home. They can hear conversations about things that are going on in other rooms when their body's there. They can remember conversations in their awareness unit that's not in their body. So if their body dies, their awareness unit is separate. The observer effect right. also teaches us that we are. Um, rendering this as we go. The observer effect is is a real thing, obviously, if you looked into the science part of that at home watching. I know you have, Chad. Um, but put those two things together and it proves that you're an awareness unit not associated with your body and that you cannot die and energy cannot be created or destroyed. So in those two things, you are immortal. That's, I mean, one theory and two theories equals you're immortal. Your body's not immortal. Your consciousness is immortal. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, but but how does this have to do with mentalism? <laughs> or we just well, we just went from one because there's a field. So mentalism the field. is okay. the, I mean there's a field, and 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 my point is that a lot of these terms like the matrix, um, there's a lot of terms in my head I can't think of right the second. They're all been hijacked by the narrative, in my opinion. And what I mean by that is when this mentalist guy says I can perceive body languages and predict what they're going to do or say or act or or actions. Um, that's horseshit. That's that's completely that's completely Mandela effect uh, related for the the term of the Mandela effect. It's false memory. People don't look at it. And I think that as creators and as people who are not, uh, lack of a better term, an NPC, 
uh, you're just more aware that that's not accurately describing what's going on. And when you realize that there is more going on than we could ever possibly fathomly uh, understand, that's when you start realizing what the cover is. And the cover is that it's it's a predictive mental. It's a, I'm a mentalist. I'm a, I read body language. That's completely crap. No, I never thought he was reading body language. I think he's doing. But he said one he of, says he is. He says he's a, he's a predictor, and he he reads body language, and he can predict. He knows people, and he studies it. And he can predict what they're going to do and say. That's horseshit. That's completely that's completely nonsense. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I believe that people. There are people, like I said, that study micro expressions, body language. Maybe sometimes they can make a prediction, like if somebody's rolling their fists and they're squinting their eyebrows, and you know, you know, they're probably going to come at you. Right. But that a lot of people know that. But in terms of who somebody's going to exactly say they had their first kiss with or who they would pass a ball to out of a when they don't even know those names. Right. They don't even know the names. I mean, you, if you don't know the names of the person that he, he kissed, how, how can you predict that? That's not a prediction. That's like saying a false memory is one that I actually remembered wrong. If it never happened, yes. how can I remember? It? It's not a memory. Right. So what does it matter? what someone's expressions are when you're talking about coming up with the name. It's, it's exactly. It's, that's called discernment. You can discern what he's saying is not actually what he's doing. And that's right, what I'm exactly. saying. That's exactly what I'm saying is that people, certain people cannot see Mandela effects. They'll never see them as they are because they'll just shut off. They won't explore the unknown like that. And, and that's, that's part of being awakened. It's part of waking up. I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. If you really want to be in this body and in, in, in this world, uh, and you want to enjoy your life the way it is. You don't. You don't log out. You don't do this. What we're doing. Let me tell you. One of the reasons that I enjoyed the '80s and a lot of the '90s so much is because I was asleep. I wasn't awakened yet to what this reality is. And I mean, I had interests, uh, but I I didn't come across David Icke until the early 2000s. Tom Campbell until maybe a few years after that. And yeah, I read the Holographic Universe in the '90s, but as far as everything that I know now that it came together, I mean, I mean, life, I think, I think it's actually a gift in some ways for people not to be awakened. In the sense is that bliss. Exactly. When you become awakened, you realize what this reality is. And it's really, it's incredible, I, I don't, but, but I think there's more to it. Yeah. There there's, there's a lot of evil in this world. And there, there's a lot of really, really messed up things going on. And, uh, and they happen all the time. And, and it's, you, you're just, you're going to be traumatized if you pay too much attention, if you have too much empathy for it. So you almost have to be callous to it. You, always, you have to have a but thick if this skin. World is, if this world is not real, if, I mean, do, do you think there's evil in video games? I mean, if, I, if I'm playing Grand Theft Auto with you and I run over an old lady who's just walking down the street, is that evil? I mean, is that really evil? Because I, I would say that there's not. If this is a dream and this isn't actually the, the the ultimate reality, if this is just a training ground, yes, can we suffer? Yes. But suffering is, is usually an internal thing. Pain is an internal thing. Pain is not something I can inflict on you by, by telling you something. You have to actually it's, feel it and you have to embrace that. It's an interesting question. It really is. Um, Tom Campbell might say, what's the intention behind running over that old lady? Uh, but even if you had evil intentions and you ran over that old lady in a still video perspective. game, it's still perspective to me. It's yeah. You're not, you're not actually doing it. You know what I mean? You might, it's, it's almost like if you have a toy, if you're playing with toys and you mm -hmm. shoot down a, 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 a plane, it looks like a 747 and it crashes and you go, whoosh. Did right. you, did you did kill, you kill all those people? people? No. <laughs> Well, and that's an interesting thing too. You know, I mean, what just popped into my mind is, is that people have arguments all the time, husbands and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends and men and women and women and women and boys and boys about cheating, you know? So if, if I, if I imagine someone else in my head or in my dreams that I just cheat, like if I didn't, if I didn't act on it, if I didn't do anything about it, if it was completely subconscious or, or even well, if it was well, conscious, like I could answer what, that. What's the line? It, it was cheating actually, because I'll tell you why. If you were, if you're married and in your dream, you have a chance to cheat and you know, it's cheating and you go ahead with it. Tom Campbell says in the dream state, we act from the being level. 
So you would probably do the same thing in real life if you did it in the dream. So, so what Tom is saying that he believes it is from his perspective. But what I'm saying is that's not my perspective at all. My perspective and, and other people have other perspectives. It's not that mine is right and Tom's wrong or, or Tom's right and mine's wrong. It's a perspective thing. It's, it's, it's a group of morals that, that you can actually associate with. And it's how I'm playing the game. This, is, this to me still is a game. Do I still have the morals to not cheat on my wife? Of course I do. But I, I don't, I'm not going to judge someone else from their perspective. And it's not because I, I think I'm better or worse or anything like that. It's, it's the fact that it's the perspective. So if I have a perspective that I have a complete chemical imbalance and I'm killing people, does that mean that I'm evil? If, I have, if I'm raised to be a, a, a serial killer, if I'm never loved, never see empathy, think this is a soul trap planet, only see suffering, I, I am hurting completely, and I turn into a serial killer, is that that I'm evil? I mean, I could argue that I was raised that way and then I don't know anything else. Well, was, was Hitler evil either? You know, I, I watched a couple of really long documentaries. The Nazis didn't is, think so. One of the one of them is called the greatest the greatest lie. I think it's called the greatest story ever told. And Hitler was definitely a product of his environment, you know, and he was fighting back. He was fighting back against the oppression that happened to the German people. And so, in one way, the German people at the time saw him as a hero. As a hero because yeah. he rallied germany up he made germany better and he fought off the oppressors so that he's looked at as a hero and, and then, then and then history was written by the history victors. is written from the history of the, of the perspectives of the winners his story and that from yeah. the perspective of the winners is that he was an evil piece of pos and i don't think that that's necessarily no. for us to judge i'm not saying that i that i agree with anything that's not what i'm saying i'm saying from the perspective of the nazis and from Hitler, what he was doing had basis. And I, I'm not, I'm not God. I'm not here to judge. So that yeah, might get me in I'm, trouble, but I don't, I mean, if you don't understand that, I can help you. One thing that I don't like is when I say something like what I just said, people say, Oh, you're, you're, you're pro Hitler. And I'm saying, no, I'm trying to point out, I'm trying to, uh, ex to exemplify your point, to demonstrate your point. You're examining, you're examining the, the, the sociology of it. Well, I'm just saying that is, you're saying, is somebody evil for committing evil acts? And I can say, well, you can look at it from both sides, two sides. Yeah. So multiple look, sides. Sure. Multiple. Ken, look, I have to get to the gym and work out. Um, it's been a blast. Who knows how a guy like this Oz Perlman is doing this. I'm definitely going to watch some clips after we finish this. I want to watch a few clips of him and then I'll get to the gym and I'll think about it while I'm lifting that iron. But there you go. Uh, for and, those and mind over matter, you can lift that weight up by just thinking you can. Yeah. I've seen videos about that too, but uh, definitely mind over matter at the gym. It just depends on the day. Now, as far as you can, people have wondered, you know, why haven't you been on the show for the last few weeks? Well, that's my fault. I've been very busy in all my endeavors. YouTube has suppressed the shit out of me. That? Who's wondering that? Those great people, the great people and of the world. Unfortunately, um, I don't make money from this channel, so I have to make money in this world. So I I have to work three or four different jobs to make that happen. It leaves very, very, very little time for open your reality. I'm doing the best I can. So that's why Ken was not on. We we tried, but it's it's really tough for me. Chad, is, it's been so long, dude. I think you were bald last time I was on the show. It's sure. been a long time. I know. I love my hair. I'm going to go to the gym like this. and I would, Maybe I'll put my hair in a, in a cornrow. In a, yeah, cornrow it or maybe put it in a ponytail or maybe I'll, I'll put it up. It's There's so much you can do with hair like this, you know. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. You're just, you're, you're just blessed. I am. To have hair like this, like this. I, I don't. Mine's gray. That's why I cut it off at the roots. I'll tell you though, it's it's a little bit warm when I go outside with this hair, but it's worth it, especially in the colder weather. It's, it's Thank you for joining us That's today. Great. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. See you later. Seek truth, surrender, and let go. I'm hijacking that. Ha ha ha. Okay.